Roger up Starley. If you didn't see that, that was a run car. <laughs> We're back with Drew. Hi. Right. Here's a question. How did you first start out in photography? I mean, what was your main inspiration? Um, it was kind of an accident, actually, um, as it were. Um, my girlfriend had a photo shoot, and I got talking to the photographer, um, and he let me have a play with his camera, and I happened to take quite a good shot. Um, framed it well, and what have you. And both he and her said I should start. And I am denied for ages. Like, really? Um, and eventually I took the plunge I borrowed a 350D um, with the standard kit lens on it, put a few extra bits and pieces and away I went. Um, learning, practicing, reading as well, uh, reading up on the basics, just to, there's no point asking stupid questions when you can get it out of the book, so I did that. And it's just practice, 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 learning, trying to learn something new and then go out and practice it. And as I've done that, I've got better and better. And when, since I started, I've got a lot of images in my head now that I want to try and capture. And they're not just one style, they're certain styles, they're different styles, aren't they? Yeah, I guess they are. Um, I mean, I shoot all sorts. It's, it's usually people and pets, uh, well, people and animals that I shoot. But when I shoot my ideas, they're generally what I call conceptual ideas. So it's taking a theme or a phrase or something like that and turning it into a photo set. So I don't just shoot individual shots, I shoot a collection of shots to fit together within the theme. Um, but I do also do normal fashion shoots, weddings, etc. as well for people if they ask, because it's all experience at the end of the day. Here's a question that what put you on the spot, and it's my question. <laughs> um, is there any sort of like photograph that is really you know, you can't really come up with a reason why you wanted to do it, but you just want to do it. <laughs> Something I fancy doing, for the sake of it. Well, I guess that's true of a lot of the photo sets I've come up with, really. I mean, every, I mean, every photographer knows what they want to do starting off, but yeah. then they come across this one picture that forms itself, and you just say, there is no reason why I want to keep this on my camera, but I'll take it anyway. Oh, right. Yeah. It's something I have shot already. <laughs> I guess, yeah, it's uh, a particular shot of, of Kim, I suppose, my girlfriend, and it, was, it wasn't a planned shot, it wasn't um, really even supposed to be a shot, it was just of the moment. Yeah. A really, really candid shot that just had the sunlight through her hair, and it was just a perfect shot, it was a perfect moment, perfect shot. Um, I loved it. She didn't like it as much because it wasn't planned, but I kept it there anyway. Well, because I've managed to get a shot on my phone, and I'm going to show the viewers right now. You know, viewers, I almost makes it sound like I'm really important. Doesn't it? Well, you're viewing the vlogs, so that's kind of right. Vlogs and more are coming up. Don't worry about that. You see, this is my idea of the weird shot. Yeah, that's a weird shot. That's kind of a weird shot. Yeah, you can't really see the guy, but hold it up. Hold it up. Put a bit of distance to it. Get rid of it. You got that? That's... there you go. Boom. Hawaiian Henry is what we called him. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no reason why I took that shot at all. It was just simply because it was there and he was drunk. <laughs> Good enough reason. Good enough so, reason. tell us about this um, Emmerdale uh, job. Then. Well, photography for me is a hobby. It's something uh, that I can use as a creative outlet um, because, as I found out, I can't write music at all, um, which is where I started. I'm a sound guy by trade, always have been, probably always will be. Um, and currently, I'm trying to go for a full time job at Emmerdale as a technical sound assistant. She's kind of the bottom rung of the ladder, which I've yeah. deliberately chosen to go down a grade in order to move up project level. Um, I previously to that I've been booming on independent films, um, but it's just not really working out for my career progression, so I've decided to move down a grade, move up project level. And um, did you always want to get a sort of like that job kind of description or? Yeah. Uh, well. I've been in sound for years. I started out originally as a DJ. I moved up into uh, live work 
doing live bands, which was great, lots of fun. Um, and then there was just too much competition with the price of the equipment coming down. Everybody wanted to do it. Um, and I was getting less and less work and poorer and poorer quality work as well. Um, so when I decided to go to uni to retrain. And originally I was going to go into studio work until I found out that the bottom end of the market had basically fallen away. Uh, which is when I discovered from the TV. And I loved it. So much so I pretty much did all the work on that module myself because I just threw myself into it. Um, and then I put my details up on a few places and was very lucky to get my very first job and that was back in 2012 and I started the day before I graduated uni. Um, and I've been doing that ever since. And I love it. I love the job. I love being on set. I love being out, you know, if you don't get the sound right on set, so it doesn't matter what the sound recorder does. If he doesn't get the sound in the first place, he doesn't get it. So the pressure to, to get it right every time is exhilarating. I love being on set.